Hello, people of Detroit. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. The date is the 15th of August, 2022, and the weather is partly cloudy with a temperature of 89 Fahrenheit, the perfect amount of heat for a sunbathe. I am your host, Jess Kingsley, and now we will go on to the afternoon's top stories with my good friend, Jason. Hello. These are the latest top stories in Detroit with me, Jason Lepping. Our first story of the day is some traffic news. Route 75 has been completely shut off, leaving many stranded in the heat. On to our next story. A man shot dead in Warren. Suspect known as Riley Bush. White male. 26 years old. 5 feet 8 and has brown hair and brown eyes. Last seen at a 7-Eleven near Lansun Buddhist Temple on Mile Road. He also fled the scene carrying a firearm. Police officials are still on the lookout. The victim identified as Francis Jackson, believed to be a friend of the perpetrator. On to our final story of the day. A cemetery in Melvin Dale celebrating the 100th birthday of the founder, Robert Harris, now the second oldest citizen in Detroit. This has been Jason Lepping bringing you the latest from Detroit. Just coming in with some breaking news, a truck containing multiple substances has collided into a gas station next to Route 75. It is believed to have drove into the gas station, causing a chain reaction of explosions. It is unknown what the truck was carrying but multiple witnesses have been seen vomiting near the crash site. Um. We now know the gas station it collided with, it's the mobile gas station in central Detroit. Okay. Um. We have a reporter on the scene. We now have Darren Southgate on the scene. Darren, what on earth is happening out there? Oh Jess, it's absolute carnage out here. The air smells like hand sanitizer and I'll tell you what, it gets right to the back of your throat. Oh god. Oh. Oh my god. Someone has just collapsed onto the floor, vomiting blood. Oh my god. Is it safe to be out here? I don't know. I'll carry on. Yes, yeah, I said. It's carnage on Route 75. There are ambulances and fire units darting past me every second. I can see the fumes from over where I am standing, a couple hundred meters away. Oof. I'm starting to feel a bit sick. I don't know if it's a good idea to be out here. We're gonna go now, Jess. Anybody who is listening, do not go anywhere near central Detroit. It's apocalyptic here. Thank you very much for that insight into this dangerous situation. Wait. Hold on. Um. I am now told that there is a council emergency meeting. We will now switch coverage. Hello citizens of Detroit. This conference is to tackle the ongoing issue in the central region of the city. As a city council, we will take matters into our own hands to serve and protect our people. Let's start with the incident. File 2 on the document for public safety promotes that any biological threat towards our population will be met with immediate action within 30 minutes. Around 10 minutes ago, a truck containing methane drove into a gas station, specifically the mobile gas station on Route 75 in central Detroit. This incident is believed to be a freak accident and will be taken as such. This incident is coded as a red, meaning all citizens in a four-mile radius of the crash site will have to follow a stay-at-home order issued by the Detroit Council. Anyone who will disobey this order will be met with legal consequences. This is the end of this conference. Extra details will be expressed via multiple media sources. As the blaze still continues four hours later from the beginning of the incident, multiple casualties have been recorded as a result of unforeseen chemicals that are shocking scientists.
All radio signals have been disconnected due to these chemicals and I bet the question on everybody's minds are, what chemical is this, and how harmful is it? We now have top scientist David Henner on call with us. David, what the heck is this phenomenon? Hello Jessica, it's an honor being on here today. So as you said, what chemical has been spread, and how harmful is it? Long story short, it possibly could be radioactive material. I know it sounds very dangerous, it is, but, honestly the people need to know. My advice to all citizens of Detroit is evacuate from your homes before it's too late. I've had multiple reports coming to me about people with skin hanging off of their bodies, throwing up lethal amounts of blood and unbearable migraines. Even though they are outside the four-mile radius zone, the council has quarantined. My co-workers have already left the building and I'm the only one to deliver the news. Unfortunately, I cannot stay here long, as I could take in lethal amounts of radiation, and so could you. Please, please, please evacuate to other places. This is an activation of the emergency alert system. Please follow all instructions and guidelines included in this alert. This alert has been activated by the Detroit District Council, advising all citizens of Detroit to evacuate due to lethal amounts of radiation detected throughout city. A biological hazard warning has been issued as well as an evacuation order. All citizens are advised not to take routes 75 and 94 outside of the city and use alternative routes. Please bring essentials like bottled water, canned food and a battery powered radio to tune into 7 Action News Detroit. Radiation sickness will occur if you do not evacuate. Signs of high radiation exposure include skin falling off, dizziness, lack of appetite, migraines and fatigue. Treatment facilities will be put up around the outskirts of Detroit. This message will repeat. Was the Detroit explosion a freak accident or a terrorist attack? As well as what happened in London last year, people are now suspecting that the truck was filled with radioactive material for the purpose to drive into the gas station. This is similar to what happened in London because the first attack was a radioactive detonation. Hospitals are struggling to cope with the cases which are identical to radioactive symptoms which begs the answer to the question stated earlier, was this an attack? Multiple autopsies have confirmed the deaths of over 10,000 people. on high alert and city officials say you can expect to see extra officers patrolling key areas of the city. CBS News Janelle Burrell joins us live in Times Square with more on what we can expect. Janelle. Well, Mary, officials say their prime concern this morning are soft targets across the city. So in key locations, including right here in Times Square, you can expect to see extra officers on guard. There are no credible threats directed against New York City. At the same time, we are on high alert. Mayor de Blasio attempting to reassure New Yorkers. We've gone ahead uh, to wear on the side of caution, and we're increasing the police presence uh, in critical areas across the state. The mayor says that includes community institutions. We are vigilant. We have deployed our critical response command and our strategic response group, so you'll see a lot of additional police presence on the streets of the city. Law enforcement officials say they'll also be paying special attention. And we're working closely with the JTTF and our federal partners in the FBI to get exactly all the intel we need to deploy correctly up here and uh, if any leads come back to New York City to make sure they're investigated properly. This is why we are increasing our police force in terms of patrol strength by 2,000 members. This is why we have a 500 member plus critical response command. We are always in a state of vigilance. 
Now, the mayor says in addition to those extra officers, you can expect to see 1,300 new cops will be graduating from the police academy. Many of them, he says, you will be seeing on the streets in coming weeks. Reporting live this morning from Times Square, Janelle Burrell, CBS 2 News. New York police say that they are investigating an explosion of unknown origin in busy downtown Manhattan. A suspect is in custody. The public have been evacuated from the scene, which is reported to be near a bus station. Three subway lines have been suspended. Let's just uh, go uh, speak to Hunter Fares, who joins us on the line. He's an eyewitness. Uh, Hunter, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Just tell me where you are and what you're seeing at the moment. So uh, I was you know, currently I'm in I'm on Chamber Street. Uh, I was commuting down to my school this morning, and we stopped at uh, Port Authority on 42nd Street. And um, I, over my headphones, I heard this loud, uh, loud uh, bang. And then I looked out the window, and I saw a couple of police officers walking towards the sound. And then all of a sudden, just everybody took off running in the opposite direction. And what were you doing when you heard uh, the explosion? Did you run? Uh, I, I couldn't. Everyone on the train, I wanted to get off the train. Uh, I didn't feel like that was probably the safest thing for me to be at uh, or to be on. But um, everyone, it was just too crazy. Everyone started, like, freaking out on the train, and people were, like, laying down. And, um, you know, some people were, like, it was hard to block the entrance because it's fairly crowded when you're, when you're commuting in in the morning, especially around uh, 42nd. And so what happened at that point? Did the train stop? Were you evacuated? Uh, the train actually, so after the, everyone started running, the train closed the doors um, and then it left uh, 42nd Street. Um, and just it kept going on down, stopped at 34th and then it kept moving. So. And then you finally got off the train? Yes, I did. I got, I got off um, uh, to stop for my school on Chambers. And when you came um, out at 34th, what was actually happening? I mean, were all the streets blocked at that point? Uh, everything was normal. Uh, it didn't seem like there was anything going on after you left the 42nd Street area. So I didn't know if I, what I heard was just, you know, like, you know, just the sound of a train or people were just freaking out because of all of the, um, like, um, the, the recent terrorist attacks that they were already frightened. Maybe that uh, they heard a loud sound and they thought the worst and they pre-freaked out or something. Uh, because we're looking at uh, pictures from the Port Authority bus terminal at the moment. Uh, some earlier footage of the police arriving, lots of chaos, people running out of uh, Port Authority station. We understand it happened on 42nd and 8th Street, an explosion. So did you actually hear the sound of the explosion? Yes, I did. Do you know where the train was at the time? Yes, yeah, so we, um, it had stopped uh, on the platform. Um, and then shortly after we stopped, the explosion happened. So I don't know if it was on the same platform or the same track as the A train, C, or the E. I just uh, know the sound was relatively close and uh, everyone freaked out. And where are you now? I am about 40 streets away from the area now. Okay. Uh, on Chambers. Uh, Hunter Fares, thank you so much for joining us here on the program. This is a conference regarding the state of emergency in the United States will be expressed by a representative of the president. Due to the multiple attacks against the country, martial law will be put in place for all of August. This code will follow the Civil Defense Act that states any red alert attack will be met with presidential consideration, and if the president decides an action is necessary, the government will take responsibility for it. We do not know who is responsible for these attacks, but we do now know these attacks are linked to the attacks in the United Kingdom last year. Further details will follow as soon as we are updated. Our top story tonight, riots break out in the United States as martial law is declared. Following the recent attacks on the United States, the United States government have ordered martial law and a curfew for cities over a population of 1 million. 
NATO have declared an international security threat, as well as high risk for terrorist attacks in developed countries. Prudent, uh, ...measures to prepare ourselves. And that's the reason why we, uh, over the last months and weeks, have significantly increased the presence of NATO troops, uh, more land troops, uh, ground forces, but also air and naval uh, forces. In the coming days and weeks, there will come even more. Uh, so we will further increase, uh, and we are increasing, uh, our presence. And today we activated NATO's defense plans that uh, gives uh, our military commanders um, um, more um, authority to move forces uh, and to deploy forces when needed. And of course, this could also be elements of the NATO response force. Uh, so we are uh, ready, we are uh, adjusting our posture, but what we do is defensive, is measured, and we don't see confrontation. We want to prevent the conflict and any attack against any NATO allied uh, country. It is unclear who is causing these recent attacks, but the top suspect seems to be North Korea, China and Russia. If any of the three countries claim responsibility for these attacks, a war will be declared. President Joe Biden was unavailable during the White House briefing that was executed by Vice President Michelle Obama. People think betting is about what you know. It's also about who you're with. And with the win Bet sports betting casino app, you bet with win. Ben, look at this, look at this. New York plus three and a half at home. They're 44 and 22. Greg, we talked about this. Hey! Hope you didn't better. Coming in with some breaking news. Just three hours ago, the United States was hit by a massive power grid massacre as the country faces its worst economic recession since the Great Depression. Almost all of the United States has fallen under mass darkness but rioting and looting continue. This is believed to be a cyber attack on the country. Russia, North Korea and China hijacked American television last night. The message is translated to and I quote, You are under control, we have a weapon, this cyber attack could be what they were referring to. As the Ukraine war rages on, Russia has another plan, world domination. China and North Korea are also involved with this attack, as their native language was shown on the messages as well. Tracking back to the blackout, thousands of casualties have been reported in major cities. New York was attacked a few days ago, with a bomb being detonated next to a bus department. We now know this is linked with the Detroit incident, and the blackout. President Joe Biden has stated that Russia, China and North Korea will be met with consequences and as soon as possible. This could lead to a nuclear war. With the world's future at stake, NATO have declared an international emergency and a violation of the Nuclear Treaty Act. The United Kingdom's Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said that if the United States is under attack, we shall stay loyal and protect our friends. Consider the postman yeah. when I took the, the tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're actually laughing if you kept anything from any of yours. Yeah, I've, uh, you know, I've got a small... This is BBC Television from London. Normal programming has been suspended. This is BBC Television from London. Normal programming has been suspended. This message is being presented by the BBC, the Home Office and Her Majesty's Government to inform the British public of an act of war against the United States and United Kingdom. At this time, 
Please prepare for a nuclear war as this is a likely event. Please do not panic. The United States has been attacked by Russia, China and North Korea in a plan to invade the country. Water and gas may be shut off for military services at any time. Panic buying will make rationing even worse for other people, so it is not recommended unless you have exemptions. This is the end of this broadcast. Be vigilant for any updates from the BBC. Uh, a capsule from Apollo 13, a miniature one that we used to float down. I actually donated it to... The